good day everyone and welcome to these lectures on physico chemical processes for waste water treatment so in the previous lectures we studied regarding the advanced oxidation processes and we understood that in the advanced oxidation processes uh, the main objective is to generate various reactive oxygen species and then further use them for mineralization of various pollutants present in the water considering the same there are many techniques which are available uh, which generate these reactive oxygen species in various ways so one of the techniques which is very commonly used it is called as photo oxidation or wastewater treatment by photo catalysis so we are going to learn regarding photo oxidation or photo catalysis in today's lecture now photo catalysis in general is used not only for waste water treatment it can be used for synthesizing various chemicals etc also uh, the few things which are common in photo catalysis for reaction engineering or photo catalysis for waste water treatment certainly we use a catalyst and also certainly we use some photons to initiate the reactions so uh, this is photo catalysis for reaction engineering and waste water as such are similar but how they work uh, that we are going to learn in today's lecture regarding the use of photo catalysis for waste water treatment the term photo catalyst is a combination of two words we can see photo which is like related to photon and catalyst which is a substance which alters the reaction rate and thus it enhances the rate of reaction or otherwise the reaction sometimes may not be possible also so photo catalysts are material that change the rate of react chemical reaction on exposure to light and thus they are known as photo catalysts a uh, photo catalysis includes reactions that takes place by utilizing light that light may be of different wavelength and the catalyst generally is a semiconductor uh, which have some properties which by uh, via which they absorb light of some particular wavelength the substrate that absorbs light and acts as a catalyst for chemical reaction is known as photo catalyst all the photo catalysts are basically semiconductors so there is common thing that photo catalysts are semiconductors only and so these semiconductors are like those substances which have an electron hole pair hole pair generation on exposure of them to a light so any semiconductor material if it is exposed to light in particular depending upon the elect the gap which is there between the valency band and the conduction band they will generate an electron hole pair so this is the common observation for all photo catalysts now there are different types of photo catalytic reactions possible and they may be categorized into two types on the basis of appearance of the physical state of the reactants themselves so we have homogeneous photo catalysis and we have heterogeneous photo catalysis so we have two different photo catalysis now in the homogeneous photo catalysis the semiconductor and the reactant are in the same phase that is either they are in gas phase or in solid phase or in liquid phase and such reactions are called as homogeneous uh, photo catalysis now when the both the semiconductor and reactants are in different phases such photo catalytic reactions are classified as heterogeneous photo catalysis so most of the uh, photo catalysis reactions which are used for waste water treatment uh, they are heterogeneous photo catalysis now there is one property of semiconductor is that they have band gap so that band gap is very essential for generation of electron hole pair and depending upon the band gap these semiconductors absorb light of different wavelengths 
so the energy difference between the valency band okay and the conduction band lumo band is known as band gap so on the basis of band gap the materials can be classified into three basic categories one metal or conductor another semiconductor and another is insulator so those who are having less than one electron band gap so they are called as metal or conductor now semiconductor are those who are having uh, electron gap uh, more than 1.5 but around 3 to 4 so and up to 5 also insulators they have band gap more than 5 electron mole so what does it mean it means so here we can see here the insulator is there semiconductor and conductor now if we start with the insulator so this is the valency band and this is the conduction band and here the gap is more than 5 electron volt so for providing this much energy the lambda value which actually is reachable on the earth or otherwise which can be provided the amount of energy required is very high so we despite every mean we it is not possible to transit this electron into this conduction band so because we cannot generate any electron hole pair so uh, this is they are termed as insulator in the conduct in the conductors the band gap the energy difference between the conduction band and valency band is very very less so in fact very small amount of energy is also good enough to transfer the electron from valency band to conduction but so we have generation of electron and holes but the problem is that that electron again will quickly fall back into the valency band so electron hole pair which gets generated then won't be stable so it is highly unstable though the movement is there now in the semiconductors the band gap electron can move into the conduction band the energy we can obtain using uv light the most of the research is going towards utilizing the visible light can we create this electron hole band uh, gap this electron can be transferred from the valency band to conduction band and still they are stable so we have a hole in the valency band and electron in the conduction band if we can stabilize this condition so that is called semiconductor so the semiconductors are these materials which have 1.5 to up to 5 or maybe 4 electron volt so up to this we can use the semiconductors now going further how does photocatalyst work so when a photocatalyst is exposed to light of desired wavelength desired wavelength is like the whatever is the band gap it should be able to excite the electron from the valency band to conduction band that much sufficient energy should be there so uh, we have like suppose 3.3 electron volt so the h this should be equal to h nu or we can write this should be equal to hc by lambda so we can know the lambda value which is which will be having enough sufficient energy so if the photocatalyst is exposed to this desired wavelength which can be calculated from here the energy of photons is absorbed by the electron of the valency band and it is excited and it goes into the conduction band now in this process a hole is created in the valency band itself this process leads to the formation of photo excitation state and an electron and hole pair are are getting generated this excited electron is used for reducing an acceptor in which a hole is used for whereas a hole is used for oxidation of dolo donor molecule so now this electron can be used for reduction this hole can be used for oxidation so this way we can perform different processes by using this electron hole pair now photocatalyst provide both oxidation as well as reduction environment so through this we can work and use them for oxidation of different types of 
uh, compounds in present in the water which are desirable. So, and any undesirable uh, pollutant which is like any organic pollutant. So, if it is present in the water it can be oxidized via using this technique. Now, interaction of semiconductor. Now, reduction of substrate uh, takes place. So, if suppose we have electron, uh, we have a whole pair which is generated here and we have a electron which is here. Now, how it will interact with different substrates? So, uh, this is what is shown here. So, reduction of substrate takes place when the redox level of substrate is lower than the conduction band of the semiconductor. So, if the redox level of substrate is this, it is possible because electron can go into this, but if it is at higher state it is not possible. So, this is the problem. Now, similarly oxidation of substrate takes place when the redox level of substrate is higher than the valency band of the semiconductor. So, if this is the level it is possible that reduction will happen otherwise reduction may not happen. So, under this condition as we can see so here it is possible that electron will move from this substrate to this hole and thus neutralize this hole. Neither oxidation nor reduction is possible when the redox level of the substrate is higher than the conduction band and lower than the valency band of the semiconductor. So, this is the state C we can see here. So, we can see here reduction will happen when this condition is there that for substrate uh, what are its redox level. So, if one of its redox level higher redox level is lower than that of the conduction band. So, reduction is happening and this is not possible because this is at lower level. So, it will never go like this. Similarly, in the B stage the, the lower redox level of the substrate is higher than that of the valency band. So, the electron can move from the valency band uh, this, uh, this lower level to this conduction band uh, through this valency band and it can this movement is possible, but this movement is not possible because the conduction band level is lower than the higher redox level of the substrate. So, electron can never move into this, but electron can move into to this. So, oxidation is possible. In the C level, well, both are in between these two levels. So, you, we can see both are possible. So, this is totally redox reaction which is possible. So, this is another condition where both the possibilities are there that oxidation and reduction both may happen. Now, there is another condition D condition where we can see the higher level is above the conduction band, lower level is below the valency band. So, under that condition there is no possibility of any reaction which is possible. So, the key inference is that that we should know the gap with respect to semiconductors also and we should know the substrate redox levels as well. So, if we can perform this calculation beforehand we can know that whether any oxidation or reduction is possible or not. So, this is there. So, we can see here what is written in, in the third that neither oxidation nor reduction is possible when the redox level of the substrate is higher than the conduction band and lower than the valency band which is like D stage D. Now, both reduction and oxidation of substrate takes place when the redox level of the substrate is lower than the conduction band which is here and the higher than the valency band. So, this is here. So, in the under this condition both oxidation reduction is possible. So, this slide gives an idea that when any reaction is possible, when, when we can oxidize or reduce any of the pollutant or not. So, uh, this is there. So, we should know the levels redox level of the substrate as well which can be calculated. Now, these are the band gaps of different semiconductors. So, we can see here from 1.42 to 3.91. So, for zinc, ZNS 
So, these are different zinc sulphides. So, they have similarly uh, common catalysts which are used in wastewater treatment they include like zinc oxide, uh, titanium oxide. So, they have this band gap. So, this, these may vary also. So, they have been reported differently at different temperatures, how they are made, what is their morphology etcetera. So, depending upon that these are the tentative band gaps which have been reported in the literature, they may vary also a little. So, this is there. How do we calculate the band gap of any new semiconductor material or any new photo catalyst suppose we synthesize? So, in this example has been given for mineralization of pyridine and quinoline by copper doped zinc oxide photo catalyst. So, this is there. Now, people are working to use different types of photo catalyst and now to reduce the band gap. So, why they want to reduce the band gap and how they can do this? So, they can reduce the band gap uh, by a doping or using any localized states. There are many possibilities in that, uh, but here we will try to understand that how uh, why they are going for reduction in the band gap in particular for TiO2 and zinc oxide. So, if we actually perform the calculation for with respect to valency band and conduction band of like zinc oxide. So, whatever is this band gap E g value. So, we can know this E g value. Now, this E g value is equated to H c by lambda and from this we can calculate the lambda value okay, by proper unit conversion. So, after putting the values in proper units so that they are reduced. So, we'll, we can find that lambda value. Now, we will find that the lambda value which is required for performing the this electron hole pair that will be equal to that we require the light in the U V range. That means, we require very high intensity light. Now, the amount of light UV light which is available at the surface of earth is much much lower as compared to visible light. So, people want to reduce this band gap. So, they want this valency band to be here, but maybe the conduction band to be here. So, that we can have the lambda which is in the visible light range. So, uh, this is this is the objective. Now, there is a problem if the band gap gets reduced. So, whenever there is any electron which is moving from here to here, it falls back also very quickly. So, there is a dilemma between uh, how to go ahead stabilize the system still use the visible light and we can reduce the this band gap of suppose this is zinc oxide. So, we can reduce it by doping. So, we have some localized uh, conduction band or valency band created either here or here. So, if we can do this, so this is the reduction in the band gap which is there. So, that is why here copper doped zinc oxide photo catalyst was created and that has been used for pyridine and quinoline which are difficult to oxidize compound. So, for their mineralization. So, to understand photo generated electron hole pairs over the photo catalyst, it is necessary to analyze the convenient energy levels or potentials of the semiconductor uh, that is in between conduction band and the valency band edges with respect to potential of the reactive species. So, with respect to reactive species, what is the potential and also we have to know what are the their levels, the valency band and conduction band. So, these equations help in calculating the energy gaps of different semiconductors, plotting them for comparison with the standard elements like uh, we can any of these uh, NHE, um, this we can plot and then we can know. Similarly, we can calculate the homo -lumo energy levels of targeted compounds like pyr pyridine, quinoline, etcetera. So, though, so we can understand whether this interaction is possible or not the way it is shown here in this slide. So, going further, so what we do is that first we try to get 
the u v versus lambda value and from that we use this particular equation. So, band gap energy of various zinc oxide sample or any other sample can be calculated using the following relationship which is called as torque relationship or torque plot and in this what we do is that we plot this particular value with respect to h nu. So, if we can plot this uh, we can perform the calculation and the we this plot is done and here we take the tangent and wherever this tangent intercepts the x axis that value is equal to the E g value or the band gap. So, here we can see it is tentatively between 3 and 3.5. So, we can take like 3.25 or something. So, this is how we plot them and thus we can calculate. So, you can go into the literature and study regarding this paper. So, you can use torque equation and then also this function is used further for plotting this particular equation and from here we can calculate the band gap. So, this is the band gap value that we obtain from this plot. So, uh, we can see here different torque plots are plotted for different doped uh, 1 percent 5 percent doped copper on zinc oxide and these values these values can be used for knowing the band gap. So, we can see the that with doping the band gap is decreasing. So, there is some optimum doping which will help in uh, reducing the band gap up to a desirable value. So, that the semiconductor can be used for mineralizing any compound or otherwise. So, the how we know then what is done is that the interaction how to understand the interaction that can be done using these particular equations. So, we can see here for zinc oxide the valency band and the conduction band the levels are given here. So, the band gap is 3.3 electron volt. Similarly, for TiO2 also this is given here. So, we can see the inter whether interaction between them is possible. So, this is for some zinc oxide titanium mix oxide. So, we can know the band gap levels. Similarly, we can here in another condition for copper oxide and zinc oxide for copper oxide the band gap levels are shown for zinc oxide the band gap levels are shown and then for pyridine we can see here for pyridine their lumo and homo levels are shown and similarly for quinoline their lumo and homo levels are shown. So, if copper oxide and zinc oxide are mixed together so we have different levels which are created and similarly for pyridine. So, there are different possibilities of interactions which are possible. So, movement of electron from one place to another. So, using these calculations we can understand the basic mechanism by which the overall interaction is happening. Now, the energy levels of the conduction band and the valency band can be calculated using this equation. So, these equations are used to calculate the values. So, how do we know that what is the exact value of uh, conduction band and the valency band. So, for doing this what we do is that first we calculate the absolute electronegativity of the semiconductor. So, this is done and this is uh, done using this equation and here we require the value of A, B, C etcetera of the absolute electronegativity of the elements present in the semiconductor as well. So, using this we can calculate the absolute electronegativity of the semiconductor. Now, once this is known and the band gap is known. So, and also the E h 2 value the energy of the free electron at nation at versus h 2 this value minus 4.5 electron volt this is known to us. So, if this value is known, this value is known from the torque plot, this value we have calculated above. So, we can calculate the E C B. So, conduction band. Then we can calculate for valency band, so which is equal to E C B plus E G. So, using this equation, 
we can know the exact point like here for copper it is 1.91 and 0.71. Similarly, for zinc oxide we can calculate 2.98 point minus 0.39. So, but this will we can see this depends upon the band gap value as well. So, through these uh, these calculations we can know the energy levels of the substrate energy levels of the mix oxides dif its different composition uh, if it different oxides within the mix oxides or doped oxides. So, through this we can understand the big basic mechanism as well. Vice versa if suppose we want to mineralize some key compound. So, we can know calculate the homo level itself and from the literature we can know how we which photo catalyst we should select. So, that we have the desired interaction possible via all these four possibilities. So, we will select because we will be knowing the homo level of some targeted compound. So, we should select the this photo catalyst in such a condition that interaction is always possible. So, these are the possibilities with respect to use of photo catalyst. So, these are the some of the photo catalysis reactions which are given here. So, like titanium oxide uh, interacting with the desired photon and then we have electron and hole pair which is getting generated. Now, this hole is again interacting with the water present in the uh, wastewater sample and then we have H plus and hydroxyl radical which is getting generated. Similarly, this hole is interacting with OH minus and again a hydroxyl radical is getting generated. Similarly, the electron in the conduction band is interacting with oxygen which may be dissolved in the water to get this particular ion and this particular ion again reacting with H plus to form another radical. So, this is these are the different possibilities of radical formation. So, all these radicals which are getting formed. So, all these are called react, reactive oxygen species and now these will react with organic compounds and degrade them. So, this is possible. Also, there is a direct organic compound may interact with electron and holes. So, we may have reduced product, we may have oxidized product. So, this is this is direct reaction of the organics with electron and hole fuel and this is this is like indirect oxidation where first radicals are getting generated and then they are reacting with the organic compound. So, these are the this is the how the wastewater treatment happens via ex advanced oxidation processes using photocatalysis. Now, wastewater treatment by photocatalysis there are few key things to understand. So, organic pollutants they are sensitive to visible light. Therefore, on exposing it to the light in the presence of some photocatalyst, electron transfer uh, will occur between the organic compounds and the photocatalyst. So, firstly suppose we take any dye molecule. So, suppose dye molecule adsorb on any of the compound or semiconductor will ex get excited by absorption of light. Then excited organic pollutant or dye molecule will transfer its electron in the conduction band of the photocatalyst. This excited electron then reacts with the dissolved oxygen to form active oxygen anion radicals. On excitation of photocatalyst electron hole pair formation will take place and which is responsible for production of any of these reactive oxygen species and these species react with organic pollutant to mineralize them. So, uh, the basic mechanism is very similar there may be as given here there may be this is called direct reduction or oxidation. So, this is there. So, this is direct reduction or oxidation. So, any of these possibilities are there then we have indirect oxidation, indirect oxidation via reactive oxygen species. So, this is also possible. 
Now going further the photocatalytic application of like nano uh, titania promises to be inexpensive via alternative complementary methods for water and wastewater treatment, but there, there are many challenges which are there with respect to utilizing photocatalyst for large scale application. So, uh, these there are many major technical challenges such as optimum system setup. Okay how much water we can process so that the availability of light is still there. So, th that is one difficulty. So, we can see here pipes are there. So, in this the titania may be coated and the water while flowing through this pipe gets treated. So, and this is there. Also, there are many challenges with respect to utilization of photocatalyst photo for large scale application. But slowly and slowly modules are coming. Now, similarly the photocatalysis may be integrated with other uh, traditional wastewater system in this manner that suppose any water is produced which is like it has to be treated. So, we have some physico chemical treatment here after that the some photocatalysis is performed. So, that we can degrade some targeted compounds and once that targeted compounds are there uh, degraded the simpler compounds will also get degraded. So, this is possible and after this treatment there it may go to bioreactor for further treatment. So, there are many integrations which are possible of photocatalysis along with the traditional treatment. Now, photocatalytic reactors which are used in the wa water treatment. The development of new technology can be visualized to the taste of the sun on the horizon. So, uh, we have lot of availability of light from sun and uh, the problem is that uh, from the ri from rising from initial stages during the uh, in the morning. So, there is lot of uh, problem and challenges with respect to photocatalytic water treatment because uh, like the water treatment using photocatalyst will work only during the daytime and also only between 4 to 6 hours depending upon the availability of sunlight. Second thing the availability of UV light is not that much. So, we have to see that photocatalysts which are developed they should be able to work in the visible zone. So, this is the this is a challenge with respect to development of photocatalyst. Then there are other challenges that we cannot treat highly murkier water because the sunlight will not penetrate into that water. So, that is another challenge which is there. So, there are many challenges with respect to water uh, uh, treatment and uh, uh, we need to understand all these things. So, there are a lot of studies going on all these aspects we will not discuss into this, but there you can study many papers and other things to further understand this. Uh, photocatalysis has lot of prospects. Uh, we understood that it can be used for wastewater treatment already lot of research has been carried out. The only challenge is that it will work only during daytime. Otherwise, we will have to create a simulated atmosphere where the treatment can be done using some artificial lights. Second thing is that we have to use some photocatalysts which can work in the visible light. So, we need to develop those, then only our system can work without utilizing the artificial energy. Otherwise, we will be requiring UV light from other sources. So, that will make the overall system highly energy intensive. So, with this uh, we will end that today's lecture. We will continue further with advanced oxidation treatment processes different type and understand how they work. Thank you.